I've had the opportunity to travel to South America and Europe and the U.S., many cities in the U.S., many cities in Europe, to do my research for putting together an exhibition that is perhaps most important in its subtitle, Video Poetry 1980 to 2020. So what that means is that this is really a chronological survey of the art form since its conception. I had to make certain curatorial decisions, of course, but you should know that here and inside the gallery are 29 works from 27 artists. Two artists have two works. One of them is here with us today, Jim Andrews. There are 29 works in there. These are short videos for the most part. There's of course three that are 15 minutes in length, so it does vary, but most of them are in the three to five minute range. And in order to see every work in there, it would take you two and a half hours to sit down at the benches and go around with headphones on to experience these 29 works that I've selected. The 29 works that I've selected are from 196 artists. Now, give or take a few, of course. Uh, these 200 artists obviously have uh, produced more than one work. Each of those artists have produced many works. So it was a very difficult selection, and these are all selections that I've collected over the years, at least the last 15 years that I've spent researching and writing about this particular art form, and it is an art form, and that is really my calling as far as this exhibition is concerned, is to show you that uh, here we are in an art gallery celebrating what during the symposium that we held on November the 5th we called New Art Emerging. So this is really a new art form that you are experiencing emerging since the late 70s, beginning of the 80s, and it is the first time ever that this has been put together in a comprehensive, uh, very carefully selected group of works from all over the world that I've been able to experience myself. So I'd like to begin by inviting you into the gallery where you are right now and to see, because I won't be able to talk too much about the content of the 29 works that you're going to experience in there. So what I would like to do for this tour is to introduce you to my form, to my curatorial form for this particular exhibition. So after selecting all the works, I decided to use this piece called Checking In by Jim Andrews, who's filming right now, <laughs> using the text of Adina Karasik, a poet, who had written these really funny sentences, many of them, uh, that refer to fictional celebrities uh, doing all kinds of crazy things, what language enables us to do. And with my apologies to Jim Andrews, I call this eye candy. <laughs> and if anything is going to uh, motivate uh, visitors to come and see our exhibition, 
this is the work that I would select from all the others that you see in there. Uh, I would like now, beside the beside the screen, there is a descriptive, uh, what I guess Jordan would call a didactic panel, and I do want to read you what it describes for this work before we move along, and we might not even make it into the gallery at this rate, I know, Jordan, but um, it's important for you to know that there are many different types of works that I had to select from, and poetry in the last hundred years has really expressed itself in so many different forms that I think that video poetry can recognize and uh, exhibit as part of this multifaceted uh, poetic movement that we've experienced in the last hundred years. And so to describe this particular work, I wrote, video poetry recognizes that poems and stories voices and plays have all been pressuring their respective mediums to expand their borders and yield before unapprehended expressions and multiple interpretations of what it means to produce that ind indefinable experience we call art. Sound poetry and vispo visual poetry language poetry and performance poetry can attest to the gains won in the discoveries along the path of experimentation. One of these discoveries is checking in. So now if you would, wouldn't mind following me. of the gallery, I've learned, is called the Title Wall. We've worked on this, Jordan, myself, and Reese from the gallery, we worked on this for a number of uh, drafts before we ended up with this curatorial statement that I penned uh, for you to be able to get a little bit of an idea, uh, theory-wise, as to what I'm looking for and what I, why I decided to do this. Now, I refer to the most important aspect of this exhibition as the subtitle, Video Poetry 1980-2020, being a, uh, a chronological survey. The show will begin in five minutes. Please make your way to the main stage theater. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the title of the exhibition poets with a video camera refers to um, and it sounds like and looks like the documentarian Russian Ziga Vertov's man with a movie camera and it is no accident it is a homage to the 1929 groundbreaking film that announced the arrival of a rev revolutionary new art form in filmmaking but I took that and I twisted it, tortured it perhaps, uh, and called it poets instead of a man. It includes many women. Genders are not an issue here. Uh, poets with, instead of a movie camera, a video camera. So that's where the title lies. You can come back another time and maybe uh, refer to more in-depth work, but now I think we can walk into the main gallery. <laughs> now, if I were a uh, typical gallery goer, I'm going to follow that route 
And no wonder that I called the screens behind you that we will get to in a minute, I called them stations. And it's almost like stations of the cross, yes. So when we first come in, we're confronted with this slide that is uh, an enlargement of some important sentences that I had written as part of what I called a manifesto in 2011. And it was due to this work that I was uh, inspired to write for my students. I was going to be introducing a, a course uh, of visual poetry and, uh, and video poetry was going to be part of it and I didn't know what I could do uh, to make sure that this had uh, proper uh, uh, educational uh, resource. So I ended up writing what I call the manifesto. And I could not believe how it took off. And all over the world, people were uh, visiting the uh, website that I had posted it on. And, uh, and I started getting invitations to uh, conferences and symposiums and, and festivals, all to speak about what did I mean by all this stuff? So on the top left is the actual definition that I introduced and is still very current in, uh, in, in helping festivals, let's say, describe uh, the rules of engagement uh, with this particular art form. So what's important there is what I, I, I do want to just mention that there is a tautology, which means a circular form of argument. So it's very hard to, uh, to make it a proposition, but video poetry is a blah, 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 poetic juxtaposition of images with text and sound. And by saying po video poetry is poetic, is a kind of a circular argument, and I was aware of that, but I had no other recourse than to use that word poetic to describe a very personal, subjective vision of what we mean by juxtaposition. Uh, video poetry is one word. You'll be surprised how many different ways uh, video poetry is used, is hyphenated, uh, it's a poetry video, it's a poetry film, very popular in England and in Germany, and people do refer to video poetry uh, as Tom Conovis writes it, video poetry. It has taken on a very definite kind of, uh, of uh, description. Um, Text displayed on the screen is an essential element of a video poem. One of the first questions that I was asked was, does the work have to have text? And this sentence in the manifesto addresses that and says, yes, either displayed, uh, text on the screen, or voiced, but it does have to have text. And this is kind of important to me because it talks about how we take poems from a book and we say, we like that book, we like that poem, and I'm going to make a video poem out of that poem. And basically what this part of the manifesto refers to, these are the highlights here, is that the poetry is the result of the juxtaposition of the text with images and sound. It is, not, it is only one element, the previously published poem is only one element called the text element. So that, in a video poem, is no longer poetry. It's, the poetry is how it works together with the images and with the sound track. So that's kind of important for me to pass on to you at this particular point, because that is really the basis on which I selected 
the 29 works that you're about to see. In this corner here, which for a long time we had no idea what we're going to put here, I think Jordan and I were to... Oh, I'm getting a sound. This is a sound cone. This is the only sound in the space, uh, and it only works if you're standing under that cone. What we see here is um, a 2002 work by, uh, by two First Nations artists, Jason E. Lewis and Scawinetti. There they are. Their names just appeared for us. Thank you for that. And once I saw this work, I decided that this had to be in the exhibition because what they do here in this Thanksgiving address is, and because we're so close to uh, American Thanksgiving, and we just had ours a few weeks back, uh, it works perfectly for this time of year for us. And what they're doing is in the center uh, screen, there is a traditional Thanksgiving meal being eaten, but the two uh, participants and poets and writers and artists of this particular piece they are thanking technology for all that technology has given us. And once I discovered this work, I realized how important this particular piece is going to be for our exhibition because believe it or not, everything that's happening behind you that we're gonna to get to is working. All the videos are rolling and all the sound is happening. And there are, uh, there are small screens that I'll get to in a minute. And everything is working and interactive. And it's all due to the fact that we made sure that we abide by those spirits of technology that govern. Uh, and certainly it, it did prove to us on our day of the symposium when the power was down, that all this could no longer exist without some force of the spirit of technology. When I turn around, after having seen these two, and I look around the space, I notice that I have, please notice that I have selected uh, a chronological division of works. There are a number of works uh, at each station, and uh, those works here, beginning with 1980 to 1990, that's when they were produced, and we work our way all around the wall right to 2020, uh, and Fiona Lamb's work ends the, uh, the selection uh, of videos. So that was generally the form that I decided on that a chronological division would work best for a selection of a chronological survey. It made perfect sense. The other thing that I was interested in was how do we see the space that we're in? And I wanted a kind of a, a Lawrence Wiener type of effect of text on the walls. And of course you would think that, oh, that one by Clement Greenberg under 1980 to 1990, that has some relationship with that particular decade, but it really does not. It really is just a, a message from the ether uh, that kind of is brought into our consciousness of looking at the space that should support the way that I see video poetry, even though they, Clement Greenberg, had no idea about video poetry. It did not exist. And neither did all the others, including, I'm pointing at Viktor Shlovsky, who probably was one of the most influential uh, formalists who invented formalism basically, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And when we get to that, uh, I'm going to point that out to you. So, if you are not sure of 
the experience so far, the first bewildered reaction to innovative art, which what this is, was to be the sole and appropriate one. So you're doing fine already by having a bewildered reaction to what you are experiencing if you had headphones on and you were actually experiencing the works, which is the only way to do it. The image gives a context to the words that we are working with. And, and it is in that relationship that the art of these works is expressed. These are time-based. It's a time-based art that you're experiencing. When you go next door and you see a painting that is not a time-based painting. There are some arguments about that, about how your eye moves over it, but generally it's considered visual art and video art are very different in that, in the context. Ursula K. Le Guin, who I'm sure most of you should know as a wonderful fiction writer, wrote to subvert as much as possible without hurting anybody's feelings. So I'm still in the headspace of subversion, that this is not your normal type of video, short narrative video with a la-di-da kind of message in the words. It is to subvert that kind of normalcy. And here we come to the probably the most significant one, because it's one of the earliest, I think it was in 1905, that this was written. And Shlovsky said, the technique of art is to make objects unfamiliar. And if you're, again, if you're experiencing a first bewildered reaction, then he's saying that's good. And he's saying to make forms difficult, that it shouldn't be an easy type of experience for you. To increase the difficulty, which I'm doing right now, and duration of perception. Duration is important that it should be longer. You stretch out that perception of difficulty because the process of perception is an aesthetic end in itself and must be prolonged. So going with that forward, Samuel Beckett probably one of the greatest playwrights of the 20th century, said, to find a form that accommodates the mess, that is the task of the artist. And what I like about that so much is that it is to find a form. And if I'm interested in anything, notice I haven't, except maybe for Jim's a little bit, but I haven't really talked about the content. There's so much wonderful content in here that depends on the form that that content took shape in. Because otherwise, no matter how great, take Howl, the great Allen Ginsberg poem, it doesn't exist as a video poem because, there, because the text of that poem is only text. And it has to accommodate, it has to interact with image to create an art expression. Cheryl Donegan, she's also a video artist. If you pour it into a poem, it's going to take the shape of the poem. If you pour it into the screen, it's going to take the shape of the screen. If you pour it into a projection, it's going to take the shape of the projection. So like water, it just kind of sees its level. Video's true level is to dis distribute and to flow. And the reason why I like that so much is that there are two ways of approaching this art form. It, in this, unfortunately, you have to choose whether you take the poetic approach or whether you take the visual approach. So the filmmakers will take the filmmaking, the video approach. And the poets like myself who began as a poet and discovered my first video poem in 1978 when I produced the poem where I sat behind a screen and only my shadow was being projected and then I would lean in and out of the frame and I did all this craziness. I did it because I wanted poetry to be expressed in this new television medium that I was a child of. Lastly, 
The size of the screens, I want you to notice that the size of the screens are 40 inch screens. And Jordan can attest to the fact that I first asked for 34 inch screens and he said I was crazy. And he suggested a 55 inch screen and I finally agreed to a 42 inch screen because I didn't want you to be us, to be overwhelmed by the image of walking near one of these works. Sound wise, even though we have a cone under the Thanksgiving one because their voices ought to be heard, that's true, I wanted this to be the silent space of a typical art gallery. And this is a very forward looking art gallery here at the Surrey Art Gallery. And we decided together that headphones for two people sitting on a bench and Chris Dean actually manufactured these benches for this particular event. So two people could sit in a very intimate way and experience the work. That's mine, by the way. That's happening. That happens to be on the screen right now. The other thing, the last thing that I would like to mention, the last thing that I would like to mention is a total wonderful innovation discovery. And that is that when you walk into an art gallery and you look at a painting, the first thing, what is the first thing that you do when you see a painting in an art gallery? You look at the label because you want to know what the title is to give you context for that painting. You want to know the year that it was produced. You want to know the name of the artist. You want a little bit of a description. You want the materials that were used for that particular painting. And what we came up with is a, a I guess it's an interactive label machine, which is a screen that tells you what is playing on the screen at that particular time and how long it's on and what the duration, um, how long is it before the next one is going to uh, appear, and it has a bio, and it has a, uh, a QR code uh, that you can get to the bio of the artist who made it, and what a wonderful invention to experience video in an art gallery instead of a paper label, but let's, do it according to the medium that we're working with. Thank you.